Today, from Bross Court in the MacArthur Center on the campus of the Masters University, it's NAIA Men's Volleyball as today the number five team in the country, the Benedictine Mesa Redhawks, are here to take on the number one team in the country, the Masters University Mustangs. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us here on TMUathletics.com and however you may be watching us. We're excited to have you alongside for the ride here on a Saturday afternoon. I'm Dave Caldwell. This is going to be a fun one for us to, to watch. And we'll talk a lot about these two teams and what they've been able to do as we get ready for this match. Let's go ahead and set the starting lineups for the visiting Benedictine Mesa Redhawks. Dupree Rogers, John Dawson, Landon Fuller, their leading hitter. Chris, Chris, Chris Kissling is their libero. Simon Jolly, Daxton Tolman will be the setter and Tyler Watts, a 6'7 freshman. The only freshman in that lineup, if you notice that, with a lot of good experience on this, on this squad. Now, for the Mustangs, there's one switch to the lineup, but we'll talk about that as we go. Here's Nolan Flexen, the 6'10 freshman NAIA Player of the Week a couple of weeks ago. Trent Norcus gets into the starting lineup tonight, 6'5 sophomore. Diego Perez, the All-American from a year ago, a six-foot sophomore, started at Pepperdine, came here a year ago. Matthew Hamm is going to be the setter today, a 5'11 freshman out of Fresno. He, too, the NAIA setter of the week a couple of weeks ago. Will Avera, the 6'5 senior middle blocker, having a great year. And Brett Norcus, all GSAC, 6'10 middle blocker. And the libero, Ethan Egger, a 5'9 sophomore out of Bentonville, Arkansas. So this is going to be a lot of fun. I noticed that they may have made a switch uh, at the last minute. They're talking Braden Van Groningen uh, is going to be in the game. And, well, I think they announced Braden Van Groningen, but I think that the reality is it's Brent Norcus that is going to be the starting middle blocker on the inside. Benedictine comes in three and two this year so far. The last two years, the Red Hawks have been in the NAIA National Championship match only to lose both of those matches to Grandview out of Iowa. Now, interesting little side note, first match of the year for the Mustangs. It was against Grandview out of Iowa, and the Mustangs won that one, three to nothing, straight sets. That was back about two weeks ago now, as we look at it. Followed that up with a win over then number five, William Penn out of Iowa. So the Mustangs are four and one. Their one loss coming to Stanford one week ago. Diego Perez to serve for the Mustangs. Catches the top of the net. That's a back row hit. Egger with the nice dig. That was Simon Jolly with it. And then Trent Norcus immediately establishing himself as he gets the start here today. Obviously, the Mustangs are in all white. They're starting things off in this first set on the right side of the court. Benedictine on the left side, and they are obviously wearing all black with a little bit of trim. Last night, as Diego Perez puts in a service error, the Mustangs in the four-set win over Concordia of Irvine, a Division I team, committed 23 service errors in four sets. So that's something certainly that was the one blemish on the mark of last night's great match win on the road. There is Nolan Flexen, and it is just too much to be handled by Demarion Benton, the libero that came in. We're going to see Benedictine rotating through liberos quite a bit between Chris Kissling and Demarion Benton. Now Braden Van Groningen will roll in and he will go back to serve. The Masters leading it two set two to one. Daxton Tolman with the set. Here's Flexen. And it's good. Flexen with his second kill of the match, coming off of a career high that he had last night against Concordia. 26 kills last night against the Golden Eagles. 
Van Groningen continuing to serve. Good serve. Quick set in the middle for John Dawson, 6'5", senior. 28 kills on the season right now, a hitting percentage of 4'11". Last year, Dawson averaged nearly two and a half kills per set. Going back to serve now, first team All-American from a year ago, Landon Fuller. Quick set to Will Avera. Avera has been so good this season and been able to get that quick set, and we'll see it. Now well, that's a different one. That's basketball. Whoa, hey, we got a volleyball game, a basketball game broke out. Mustangs leading four to two. In to serve is Bryce Jones. He will also be taking over the setting duties as he has come in for Matthew Ham. The hitting error against Benedictine. So Masters up now five to two. Quick set in the middle this time going for John Dawson, the middle blocker. Mentioned how he's got the 28 kills on the season. He also leads this team with 10 blocks. That's just one in front of Dupre Rogers and Tyler Watts as they've got nine each. Dawson now going back to serve for the Red Hawks and he puts it into the net. Now Nolan Flexen will go back to serve. Flexen tied for the team high with eight aces on the year. And a service error. And I'm really hoping, I'm not gonna be saying, and another service error. Because again, this struggles last night, as I said, 23 in four sets. That one is gonna sail off of the left hand of Dupre Rogers. So the Mustangs up by three over the Red Hawks here in the early going as Will Avera back to serve. Avera, the senior, was the GSAC Defender of the Week in that very first week. That was announced back on January 30th. In fact, that week, the Mustangs swept the conference awards. Nolan Flexen was the Attacker of the Week, going on for the National Attacker of the Week. Matthew Hamm, the Setter of the Week, going on for National. And then Avera getting the Defender of the Week in the conference. And that was all off of that trip to Iowa where the Mustangs defeated no, then number one, Grandview, and Matthew then Hammer. number five, Hammer. William Matthew Penn. Hammer. Now Matthew Ham rotates back in. He'll go back to serve and take over once again as the setter. Back setting, left-handed hit from Dupre Rogers, second on the team with 44 kills, a 346 hitting percentage in the first five matches for the Red Hawks. Now Tyler Watts, the six seven freshman, the one youngster on the team we talked about. And boy, he has made an immediate impression, although that's gonna be out, a long service error. But he has made an immediate impression, has Tyler Watts. 31 kills, puts him third on the team. But he's also tied for second with the nine blocks and he's been hitting 574 when getting the chance. Far side for Fuller, and that one's gonna work. Now Daxton Tolman, junior out of Gilbert, Arizona, 6'3", setter. Matthew Ham back setting to Norcus. That is too much for Benton to handle. Norcus with his second. Watch this power. The great back set, and it sets it perfectly for the left-handed Norcus to be able to hit. Our producer today, Faith Carver, a volleyball player herself. She's smiling at that hit. She says she appreciates that one, certainly. Dan Gr Gronigan to serve. Good serve. 
Quick set in the middle to Dawson. That's the second time Coleman is connected with Dawson on that, but they're gonna say, they're gonna say, I think that Dawson went into the net. Perhaps his swing put his right hand into the net, so the point will go to the Masters. Van Groningen continuing to serve. Going to the far side for Rogers, and Matthew Ham just needing to protect himself. Now Brett Norcus will rotate in and rotate out as the libero for the Mustangs, Ethan Egger, comes in. Egger with 37 digs to lead the Masters. And there is Egger right there, great one. Norcus. I'm sorry, Nolan Flexen. Flexen. Now watch this one. He just hits it outside the 10 foot line, but it is just impossible for Benton to be able to do anything with that. It comes right down in front of him. Bryce Jones now in, and he'll be serving and setting. Little cut shot that time by Jolly down the net. Looking for Jolly again. The block is up and he cools it nicely off the block. Three person block put up that time. But he cooled it well to give the Red Hawks the point. As Tyler Watts will rotate back in, he'll go into the front row and back to serve John Dawson. And that's gonna be an ace. It was not a, a hard hit serve, but boy, that one was a floater and a half because it did not move. It, there was no rotation on that ball as he served that one. And that might have been bouncing around before Ethan Egger even had an opportunity to try to get a good dig on that. But an ace, that's the first of the game for the Red Hawks. Jones, a nice quick set. I don't think Will Avera was expecting it where it was. It looked like he kind of put the ball behind his head. And I don't think anyone was more surprised than he that that ball found the floor. Masters up by three with Nolan Flexen now serving. Quick set in the middle. That's the third time that that has worked. Tyler Watt. 6'7 freshman elevating to be able to hammer that one down. Now Dupree Rogers serving. Here's an overpass. That one went off the head of Jones. An opportunity and then coming in from the back row was Fuller, that didn't work. Now it's Flexen dug out great by Benton. Another good dig. Quick set blocked. Back setting to Isaac Seltzer. Saved by Benton. Avera. We're only going to see the last seven seconds of this one, but it was Will Avera. Right there, that quick set to save it, but that was clearly the rally of the year so far that one was special i feel for the people that are doing the live stats because they've got to account for every single touch and there was quite a bit on that one so good for them that they're able to keep that one squared away last night benedictine they defeated vanguard and i think that's extremely important to know because the lions ranked number three in the poll last week that put the Mustangs up to number one and of course part of the reason that that's important for me to be talking about number one because it was a three set win and it was pretty dominant too 25 to 8 was the first set 25 22 and then 25 23 Vanguard was asleep apparently in the first set but that being said it was a three set win for Benedictine against number three and the Mustangs will be home next Friday against Vanguard, the number three team in the country. So 
Let's keep that one in mind. If you look at the Mustang schedule this year, it is packed with top 10 teams. And uh, Jared Goldberg, the head coach in his third season as the head coach, is not afraid to take on anybody as witnessed by the fact that he scheduled Hawaii, UC Irvine during the preseason, and then Stanford here just last week, a regular season match. That's the only loss, the only blemish for the Mustangs in the year so far. Johnny Buchanan putting that one into the net. And so Simon Jolly, the 6'3 senior out of Montpellier, Montpellier, I believe is probably the way you say it because it's in France. If I'm wrong, let me know. That's a quick set again from Bryce Jones to Brett Norcus in the middle. Bryce Jones coming off a career night last night against Concordia of Irvine, a Division I, NCAA Division I team. He had 47 assists in that four-set win for the Masters down in Irvine against Concordia. Now Matthew Hamm steps in. He serves. Tough serve. Going to the far side for Fuller. Blocked. But that's going to go out. Both both of the Norcus brothers combining on that one, Trent and Brett. Two-point difference as Tyler Watts is substituted out by the libero, Chris Kisling. Kisling serving. Going for Diego Perez. And that's going to work for him. Diego Perez last year, an honorable mention All-American in his first year as a Mustang. Averaged nearly three kills per set. That was eighth best in the GSAC and had double-figure kills 11 times. And then there's that incredible... Now, here's the... Here's the situation. The serve was going long, but Dupree Rogers went outside the court. The ball hit him in the leg. You can use your leg, and it can pop up. That's what happened. But the question is, was he standing out of bounds when that ball hit him? If he was... But if he is standing out of bounds and that serve hits him out of bounds, does that mean it's on him? He tried to play it and it was out of bounds. But it still balls up. Well, so the crowd from Benedictine who's behind us, maybe you can hear some of them, they're saying that they're pretty upset about that. The call is going to go for the Masters as it turns out. Well, that one is definitely going to be long. But, uh, you know, Kathy Blaze is the up ref. She's on the ladder on the far side. David Steinbacher is the down ref. And then Stephanie and North Steinbachers are the line judges. And so what Kathy Blaze did is he called David Steinbacher over and North Steinbacher to discuss it. And the feeling was that it was a point for Masters. <laughs> Nolan Flexen again hitting straight down on the ball. Now Braden Van Groningen going back to serve with the Mustangs up by four. Quick set. Will Avery getting a hand on it to slow it down. Back setting for Trent Norcus. That block goes out. Dupree Rogers, the one with the block attempt. So give Norcus credit for the kill. Five-point lead here in the first set for the Mustangs. Van Groningen continuing to serve. Good serve. That goes off the ceiling. Fuller does a good job to play it. Flexen does a better job hitting it. Oh, my goodness. Can you stop him at all? I mean, this is, watch the height that he gets. He is 6'10 to begin with. He can reach 12 feet on the jump test. I mean, he elevates over just about any would-be blocker that is thinking about trying to 
defend against that. You just can't do it. In 2020, when he was in high school, he was ranked as Volleyball Magazine number eight recruit in the class of 2020 was Nolan Flexen. He trained in the summer of 2021 with the under-21 junior national team as well. So Nolan Flexen, special player to be certain. Mentioned how the Mustangs are going to be home on Friday against number three Vanguard. That's a 6 o'clock start time for that one. As far as Benedictine, they're going to be back home Tuesday. They're going to host Arizona Christian at 7 p.m. in the Coyote Center. Benedictine falling in this in last week's poll. They were preseason number two. Of course, that makes sense because they are two-time defending national runners-up in the NAIA men's volleyball. But the Golden State Athletic Conference, by the way, of which there's six teams, five of them are represented in the top 25 poll. We'll talk about that during the next time out. I mean, it is, a str it is clearly the strongest conference in the nation right now. All right, so Diego Perez puts another one long. Five-point lead for the Masters. And Landon Fuller serving for the Red Hawks. Matthew Hamm with the set. Trent Norcus with the hit. Benton can't handle it. Six-point lead, Masters. Again, another good back set. Difficult spot, but he puts it, does Ham in a really good spot for Trent Norcus to be able to hit that one. So now Jones will come in to serve and set. Fuller from the back row. Too much for Bryce Jones to handle. Fuller coming in. 49 kills on the season, over 500 hitting percentage. Senior outside hitter out of Tempe, Arizona. Now John Dawson, senior out of Mesa, Arizona, to serve. And that one is out. Six-point lead for Masters. So flexing back to serve. Long again. Now Dupree Rogers to serve. Isaac Seltzer off the block. Johnny Buchanan back to serve. Tip just touches the top of the net. And then an easy dump by Tyler Watts. I say dump, an easy hit for Tyler Watts. No defense whatsoever put up by the Mustangs. Simon Jolly now to serve. Seltzer takes us to set point. Good hit from Seltzer. And again, it's another back set this time. And you got when you have two lefties on the opposite side, that helps a great deal. Good hitter. So Matt Ham in to serve set point. Blocked. And that's it. Set for Masters, 25 to 18. We'll step aside. We'll have the second set when we return. To college to explore the things that drive us, the unique ways in which God has gifted and equipped us. None of us are on exactly the same path. 
But while there are differences in our goals and dreams, we remain united in our purpose, in our collective desire to glorify Christ and to subject all things to His unchanging Word. We want to be prepared, not only for a career, but to live wisely in every area of life. This is our calling. Genesis 1, God established a mandate. Subdue the earth and have dominion over it. At the Master's University, we see engineering as a clear fulfillment of that command. Our students learn to design, apply, and advance technology for the good of their fellow man and the glory of the Creator. We don't just develop engineers. We equip leaders to engage world-changing technology through the lens of unchanging truth. After graduation, our mechanical engineers will design car engines, satellites, and robots. Machines that increase productivity and raise standards of living. Our electrical engineers will develop technology that connects us, from the cell phones in our hands to the power grids in our communities. And our computer engineers will make faster, more efficient hardware for both the workplace and home. So come to the Master's University, study engineering, and be equipped to fulfill the Creator's mandate. Subdue the Earth and have dominion over it. Second set about to get underway. Mustangs winning the first 25 to 18 and back to serve for the Red Hawks is Daxton Tolman. Again, the Red Hawks on the left side as that's gonna be Trent Norcus with the hit. For Norcus, that is his fifth kill of the match. He and Flexen now with the team high of five. Diego Perez now to serve and that Monster serve, it hits the ceiling. I'll talk about that in a second. Flexen dug up well by Rogers to keep the Red Hawks alive on this point, but Brett Norcus says, nope, not anymore. I'll take care of it myself. For Norcus, that is his second kill. Watch this 
strong hit from the senior. Won a state championship when he was when he was at Pierce College. Now Landon Fuller in to serve. Flexen goes off the would-be block. So Flexen is hitting extremely well right now. 7-14 in that first set alone. Now with his sixth kill is Braden Van Groningen. The Mustangs leading three to one. He comes in to serve. Van Groningen does have an ace on the season. And that service error, that goes long. Masters had seven service errors in the first set. Benedictine had five. And yet still, giving away seven points like that, Masters were still able to win by seven, 25 to 18. That one goes long. Isaac Seltzer and Bryce Jones come in. And now Bryce Jones will come in to serve. Good serve. From the back row is Fuller. That is special. When you can hit from the back row like that from Landon Fuller, you see him in the middle and he comes charging it. And to be able to hit down on that, it was so close to the 10 foot line. From back there, that is really special. Fuller with three kills, now four on the match. He had three in the first set to lead Benedictine. And that's going to be Will Avera. Will with his fourth of the match. Masters leading by two. Nolan Flexen now back to serve for the Masters. Blocked. They hit from Jolly. Here's Jolly again, and that's going to go wide right. Another point for the Masters. And Flexen going back to serve once again. Not sure what the confusion is. Actually, what's happening is that North Steinbacher, the line judge on the far side, has come over to have a conversation with Kathy Blaze. I, I don't know what that could be about. No. Looking around here, around me, no one knows what's going on. In the court? Maybe the ball went in the court? So bottom line, score is 6-3, and Flexen continuing to serve. And tracking it down, well done by Daxton Tolman. And then the great fake to Avera, and Nolan Flexen soaring above Avera to hit this one. First that save, Egger with the dig, the great set. Oh my goodness, the height that he got from the sec from the back row. Goodness gracious. Here's an overpass, and Avera takes advantage of that one. How many times do we see an overpass that gets taken advantage of by another team? And that's a perfect example of it for Will Avera. And that puts the Mustangs up by five. Taylor Stallman in his third year as the head coach calls a timeout. I haven't had a chance to talk about Coach Stallman. As I said, in his third year, 43-10. and 10. And how is this for a coach? You come in your first year, you take your team to the championship game. Okay, you lose. Okay, but you still went to the championship. Second year, again, back to the championship. Okay, you lose again. 
just keep on reloading and keep on refiring. That's what he's doing. Won the 2021 CalPAC Championship in his first year, and he was the 2021 NAIA Coach of the Year for what he was able to do with the Benedictine Redhawks that year. So great job by him, and he has really created a program over in Mesa, Arizona that is one of the toasts of the men's volleyball world for certain. Not to be outdone, Jared Goldberg in his third season. He's 20 and 19, but he took over a program that uh, was struggling when he took it over. In fact, he took over the program two years ago, almost to the day, at the very beginning of that particular season. He had no input on how things went leading up to that. Alan Vince got an opportunity elsewhere. He decided to take that opportunity as Nolan Flexen serves wide right. But what Jared Goldberg has been able to do last year, able to get this team ranked as high as number eight in the NAI, finished number 13. And now the number one ranking in men's volleyball. Pretty special. There's Seltzer with the hit and great job by Rogers and Tolman to keep that alive. And then a left-handed hit by Seltzer picked up. Now Fuller, and that's gonna work. So two quick points coming out of the timeout for Benedictine. Simon Jolly back to serve. Short serve, Diego Perez is there. Seltzer tries the little line shot. Now it's Rogers. Perez blocked. There's a guy right there named Seltzer. Here's Seltzer again, blocked, and that's gonna fall in. Point for Benedictine. That's a good block. I'm not sure if it was two or three different Redhawks that were there. It looks like it was two, but they found it, and you can see it clearly falls in the court, just beyond the reach of Ethan Egger for the Benedictine point. Three straights by them. Middle to Avera. In the middle, and that one works for Tyler Watts. Four straight, and it's a one point difference. Jolly continuing to serve. Out, just out. Good decision by Ethan Egger. Ball was a softer hit that time by Jolly, and it kind of floated a little bit for him. So good decision to let that one go. Johnny Buchanan is gonna rotate in, and he'll go back to serve. Buchanan the setter last year. Set a school record with 751 assists, and Buchanan puts it into the net. So he'll come back out. Ethan Egger, with the help of Will Avera, will rotate back in the Mustang Libero. Chris Kissling, the Libero for Benedictine, as in and serving. Quick set to Brett Norcus. Third for Brett Norcus. Norcus, 6'10. Mustangs with some good height. Senior out of Chatsworth. Last year led the squad with a 429 hitting percentage, all GSAC last year. 86 blocks, tied for fourth in the GSAC with his teammate, Will Avera. Jolly, or excuse me, Fuller on the far side, off the block, out, and a point will go to Benedictine. Demarion Benton now will come in to become the libero for Benedictine. And Daxton Tolman to serve. Tough serve. And something, oh, they're gonna call a double hit. The set that time by Matthew Hamm. It came up spinning. So we're tied at 10. Masters had a five-point lead at 8-3. Now a 7-2 run for the Redhawks. Diego Perez 
Fuller blocked. The Norcus brothers. Goodness gracious. You see the good set, but look at that block. Perfectly positioned, angling their hands so they keep the ball into the court. Well done. Masters back up by one. Diego Perez, one of the best servers in the country. There's another perfect block by the Norcus brothers. Mustangs on the season averaging nearly two and a half blocks per set. That's strong as that serve goes out. Too strong on the serve. By contrast, Benedictine, again, ranked number five in the nation, 1.77 blocks, which 1.77, that's respectable. That's a good number. Mustangs, 2.41 blocks per set, and they are adding to that in this match today. Norcus, his swing blocked by Dawson, but it goes out of bounds, so the kill goes to Norcus. Masters go up by two, as Will Avera will rotate in for Norcus. He'll go him into the front row, and Braden Van Gron again back to serve. Setting for Jolly, but picked up by the Mustangs. Here's Flexen, and too much to handle for Fuller. Nine kills for Fuller. Again, coming off a career high last night, 26 against Concordia University of Irvine. That one almost getting the ceiling. And that one's going to hit the hit the antenna, the hit by Dupree Rogers. So the point will go to Masters. You know, I mentioned it earlier on, and I, I apologize. I meant to explain it. If you're not familiar with volleyball matches played here at Bross Court in the MacArthur Center. But the ceiling is in play. It's a low ceiling. And the ball will deflect off of it. Good swing from John Dawson, the senior middle blocker. Now he'll go back to serve. Tyler Watts will rotate in. He'll go into the front row. Masters up by three. They won the first set 25-18. Flex in finds empty court. There is a big hole in the back row between Tolman and Fuller. And Flexen found it. 10 for Flexen. Bryce Jones rotates in. He'll go back to serve, and he'll become the main setter. And that's long. Rogers going back to serve. Oh, what a serve. Oh, my goodness. How did he do that? He caught that one just right, I'm assuming, off the heel of his hand to get a spin on that, a soft hit. And the down, look at that ball just dropped to the floor like a magnet underneath the floor was pulling that thing down. That's a great serve. By the way, that is his team high sixth ace of the season. And they're gonna call, I think it's Matthew Ham over there. Nope, it was Bryce Jones trying to get that set. The pass to him, it was, a, it was actually an overpass, but Jones tried to get it back on the other side and so they're gonna call that violation against him. Rogers with that good serve. Here's Flexen from the right side, blocked successfully, he covered. Now Flexen trying again from that right side. Egger with the overpass. Point Masters, and and the Benedictine fans and the and the bench 
are screaming for a touch. The ball was jousted at the net right in front of Kathy Blaze, and now they're going to issue a yellow card against Daxton Tolman, the setter for Benedictine. Now Landon Fuller is going to go over and have a conversation with Kathy Blaze, the upper ref. And the Benedictine fans, head coach Taylor Stallman, they disagree with the call from Kathy Blaze. They have a right to voice their opinion, but Kathy Blaze is not changing her call. Here's Jolly blocked at the net. Back row Fuller. You can see from a play like that why Fuller first team All-American last year. Average better than three kills per set. He was named Benedictine's Male Athlete of the Year last year, Landon Fuller. Jolly continuing to serve. Here's Perez. Goes off the top of the net and falls in the court. Point Mustangs. Masters up by two in this second set. And Johnny Buchanan in to serve for the Masters. He has struggled, to be honest, today, hitting the ball into the net a few times. That's a good serve. Quick set. Going for the freshman blocked at the net again. The dump, first time tonight being used by Tolman. Watts. Dug up by Flexen, back set, and a no look. Oh my goodness, what a play by Brett Norcus. Watch this one again, oh gosh darn it. Oh well, there it is. The great dig, Jones, and then the no look right hand, almost slapping that ball, finding empty court. That's a great play by Norcus. Rogers trying to find the back corner of the, of the Floor. Timeout, Benedictine, as it's a four point lead that the Masters have extended. We mentioned about how the conference. To college to explore the things that drive us, the unique ways in which God has gifted and equipped us. None of us are on exactly the same path. But while there are differences in our goals and dreams, we remain united in our purpose, in our collective desire to glorify Christ and to subject all things to His unchanging Word. We want to be prepared, not only for a career, but to live wisely in every area of life. This is our calling. Masters very well represented in the top 15 poll in the NAI this past week, as we've mentioned before many times, Masters number one in the nation. Ottawa of Arizona number two. Vanguard is number three. Menlo is number six in the nation. And Arizona Christian is receiving votes for the outside. Only six teams in the conference. Hope International is the sixth team. So some of the schools that are in the conference that we're used to seeing playing the Masters, not sporting men's volleyball. Johnny Buchanan serving, gets it off the top of the net. This is Fuller, and a good hit. Buchanan having trouble with that one, and so the point will go to the Red Hawks. As Buchanan comes out, and ultimately libero Ethan Egger is in, and the libero Chris Kissling for the Red Hawks in to serve. And that's going to be a spinner. Well, what happened is the whistle blew for a double hit and 
Diego continued to, Diego Perez continued with the hit. And the ball went into the face of Landon Fuller. He's receiving some medical attention right now. And then Kathy Blaze and David Steinbach are having a conversation. You may have heard the Benedictine bench and coaches uh, arguing and being upset about what had just happened. We apologize if any language that may have gone through. That is certainly not our intention. Daniel Compton is going to rotate in as Landon Fuller is continuing to get some consultation. So Jared Goldberg just called a timeout, literally just to give a little bit extra time, they're saying, to help with the situation for Benedictine. And I saw Coach Taylor Stallman nodding and showing, gesturing an appreciation for the gesture that Jared Goldberg was just showing just now. We understand we've been having a little bit of audio problems. We hopefully that's we're working to fix that issue. We've got everything up <laughs> on, on our end here, so we're doing the best we can. Back to the action. Chris Kissling serving. And Norcus off of the block, and the point will go to the Masters. And they're leading it here in the second set, 21-18. Matthew Ham will rotate in, he'll go back to serve and take over as setter. Trent Norcus will come in and go into the front row. Ham to serve. Matthew Ham on the season has a pair of aces. And then the dump. Well, I'll tell you what, Daxton Tolman is angry. I think a lot of the Benedictine players right now are angry. When the timeout was called just a moment ago, Tolman went off the floor having a few words with the bench of the Masters, and I think that dump right there was with a little bit of extra authority. Here's Norcus, blocked at the net. You can understand the emotion. Oh, and that's gonna land on the line, and that's gonna be a point for the Masters. And the Benedictine players are very upset about that call. I mean, I saw it here, it landed in front of me, and it looked like it was on the line to me. The players, though, are going to try to appeal. <laughs> Simon Jolly going over and having a conversation with up rep Kathy Blaze. There's a lot of emotion in the gym right now. So Kathy Blaze giving an explanation to Jolly, and Jolly coming over and joining his mates and shaking his head no and putting his palms in the air like he doesn't understand, but. And now to be honest, some of the Benedictine players on the bench are saying things loud enough for everyone in the gym to hear directed at Masters players.
David Steinbacher having an explanation with head coach Taylor Stallman right now. Steinbacher, the down ref. Kathy Blaze blowing her whistle saying we need to continue play. So Diego Perez back to serve with Masters leading by three in this second set. Going to the far side, blocked. The hit was from Rogers. Going for Rogers again, a little behind him that time with the set. Now flexing, straight down, inside the 10 foot line this time. The set came from Diego Perez in the back row. Here's Diego getting the good set. Now watch where this ball ends up. In front of the 10 foot line, my goodness. That is hitting straight down on a volleyball. 23-19, that serve goes long. 23-20. Daniel Compton, the six foot sophomore, returning home. Daniel Compton grew up here in the Santa Clarita Valley, went to Saugus High School. There's Flexen, a little behind him on that set. Blocked, the Norcus brothers again by my unofficial count, third time this set, if I'm not mistaken, that the two of them have gone up for assisted blocks. And that takes us to set point. Masters took the first set, 25-18, and here we are, 24-20, and Braden Van Groningen going back to serve. Back set for Rogers, blocked. Of course it's blocked. Masters with two and a half blocks per set coming in. And they've got multiple blocks here. And ending it, Flexen combining. I might have been all Nolan Flexen on that one. Masters now up two sets to none. We'll step aside, third set. Will it be the final set? We'll find out when we return. In Genesis 1, God established a mandate. Subdue the earth and have dominion over it. At the Master's University, we see engineering as a clear fulfillment of that command. Our students learn to design, apply, and advance technology for the good of their fellow man and the glory of the Creator. We don't just develop engineers. We equip leaders to engage world-changing technology through the lens of unchanging truth. After graduation, our mechanical engineers will design car engines, satellites, and robots. Machines that increase productivity and raise standards of living. Our electrical engineers will develop technology that connects us, from the cell phones in our hands to the power grids in our communities. And our computer engineers will make faster, more efficient hardware for both the workplace and home. So come to the Master's University, study engineering, and be equipped to fulfill the Creator's mandate. Subdue the Earth and have dominion over it.
Third set about to get underway here in the MacArthur Center. NAIA men's volleyball, the number one team in the country, the Masters University Mustangs, taking on number five Benedictine out of Mesa, Arizona. And the Mustangs winning the first 25-18, taking the second set 25-20. to The Masters in the match, both sets are hitting, I hope you're sitting down for this, 625. They have committed one hitting error the entire match. 31 kills in 48 attempts and just one hitting error. By contrast, Benedictine, they're hitting 143 as a team. They've had 49 attacks, 18 kills, 11 hitting errors in those attacks. So you can, you can point to some of the controversy we saw at the end of that second set, some of the calls not maybe not going the way that Benedictine wanted, the hit from Diego Perez, some of those things. But bottom line is, Masters is playing great volleyball. Benedictine is playing below the standard they're used to playing. That's, I think, fair to call it that way. Benedictine on the season, they average nearly 12 and a half kills per set and in their five previous matches are hitting 350 on the season that's really really good for them to be hitting 143 not even half of what they've been hitting in the first five matches this season is a reflection not only on the masters defense but also the way the game is going for benedictine mustangs playing Exceptional. And there's a good hit from Simon Jolly, the 6'3 senior out of France, to start the scoring here in this third set. Talking about blocks, Masters have five blocks in the match. One solo from Nolan Flex, and we saw that to win the second set. And then eight assisted blocks. Oh, and that's a beautiful block, combining his John Dawson and Simon Jolly. That was special. Now Benedictine playing like we're used to seeing them the last couple of years. By the way, this is the, the third time these two teams have played against each other, and they each have a win. This is a nice job by Matthew Hamm to redirect that set. Now Jolly again. Flexen. Dug by Kissling. And that's going to go wide of the antenna. Josh Bamer getting his first action of the match. Now he'll come out as Daxton Tolman will rotate back in. Masters get their first point, and Braden Van Groningen will go back to serve for the Mustangs. Good pass, trying the dump, but the block at the net, we're gonna have a whistle. And they're gonna say that John Dawson was in the net, and the point will go to Masters. And it's nothing but frustration night right now for the Red Hawks. And probably the most emotional person out there, if I'm being honest, just reporting what I'm seeing, Daxton Tolman. And now Taylor Stallman will bring Tolman out and is going to have a conversation with him. He's telling him to have a seat on the bench and he's going to have a conversation with his setter. So coming in, Trevor Medigovic. Flexen. That is the 11th kill of the match for Nolan Flexen, hitting 625 before that one. Now Bryce Jones, as the Masters tie it with that kill from Flexen, 3-3 here in the third. And it's now 4-3 Benedictine in the third. 
Service errors. That is number 15 for the Masters. Average, averaging, averaging seven service errors in the first two sets. No bueno. Jolly. Ace. Third ace of the match for Benedictine. First for Simon Jolly. By the way, Tolman is back in. Here he is setting. Quick set. That was for Dawson. Overpass. One, or excuse me, doused. One by the Red Hawks. I think that was Dawson that got that. And so the Red Hawks up to a three point lead, getting three consecutive points. And Jolly continuing to serve. Goes soft serve and a second ace for Jolly in this sequence. You could make an argument that Benedictine was taken out of the match mentally. Now in this third set, they're working their way back into the match. Seltzer with the easy put over, going to the far side and the swing from Compton. And that's gonna go out and it's another point for the Red Hawks, five straight to give them a five point lead. And Jolly continuing to serve. And that one's gonna go long. Seven service errors, now eight for the Red Hawks in the match. Now Flexen. Oh, a great swing from Debris Rogers. Using that left hand, and he talked about hitting the ball inside the 10-foot line. He did it again. Will Avera was the recipient of that, and not in a good way. I mean, that one, <laughs> I don't know. I don't think it went off his face, but it may have gone off his chest, but... Now Dawson serving. Ace again, the third ace of this third set for the Red Hawks. And the second for Dawson, timeout, Mustangs, as Benedictine has jumped up to a 10-4 lead here in the third set. Red Hawks in the early going. Oh, okay. to college to explore the things that drive us, the unique ways in which God has gifted and equipped us. None of us are on exactly the same path. But while there are differences in our goals and dreams, we remain united in our purpose, in our collective desire to glorify Christ and to subject all things to His unchanging Word. We want to be prepared not only for a career, but to live wisely in every area of life. This is our calling. The Red Hawks in the early part of this season, little more than one ace per set. They have three here in the, we're not even halfway through this third set at this point. And obviously serve receive, probably on the mind of head coach Jared Goldberg, assistant coach Ben Herb for the Masters have a quick discussion on how that needs to be fixed. Dawson serving. Left hand swing by Seltzer, that one goes out. The block goes out, I should say, so the point will go to Masters as Brett Norcus will rotate into the front row and going back to serve will be Johnny Buchanan. Back setting to Rogers on the line, good. Third of the match for Dupree Rogers, and now he'll go back to serve. He does have an ace in today's match. 
And that one goes long. Second service error for him in the match. Difference is five as Matthew Ham will now come in to serve and he'll go back. Rogers, the big hit, saved by Norcus. It goes over. Good coverage from Diego Perez. Jolly with the dig. Quick set, and it's too much for Ethan Egger to handle. So the Benedictine Redhawks have now doubled the score over the Mustangs. And that one goes out. Diego Perez serving. Going for Jolly, dug by Egger. Now flexing, oh, right down the line and good. Excellent hit from Nolan Flexen. That is his 12th unofficially. That serve goes long. And so the point will go to Benedictine and Chris Kissling now back to serve. Getting a piece of that at the front line enabled Kissling to get a hand on that. Back setting for Trent Norcus off the block and good. <laughs> Norcus now with six in the match. Braden Van Groningen back to serve for the Masters. Difference is four. And difference is five. Service errors. Now Tolman back to serve. Using that left hand and is hammering it. Number 11, Bryce Jones. Now, serving for now Bryce Jones. And Bryce will come in to set as well. Quick set. That's going to be Dawson in the middle. Quick set is a very effective tool. You can use that a lot, but you can't use it too much, can you? Because then it becomes much more predictable. But if you only go to it occasionally. Now Jolly back to serve. Flexen inside the 10 foot line again. It is always a good idea to watch Nolan Flexen in slow motion because it's hard to follow him in real time. Oh, that was nice. Now he's back to serve. His Mustang's down by four in this third set, down by five. Again, the service error for the Mustangs. Now Dawson will go back to serve. Has a pair of aces coming into the match. Has a pair of aces in this match today. Back setting for Isaac Seltzer. And then nicely done by Rogers to work it off the block. You could see him direct it as he was in the air. He directed that ball into the block so that it would go out of bounds. Really next level kind of thinking in the air for Rogers. Six-point lead 
for Benedictine. Trying to get themselves back into this match. Quick setting to Avera. Again, both times blocked at the net. Now back set to Seltzer. And Seltzer didn't get a lot on it, but he did find the empty part of the floor. Now Johnny Buchanan will come in to serve. That one gets the top of the net. Oh, and a great block. Brett Norcus. Isaac Seltzer was there as well, but I think, and there'll probably be a shared block, but I think it's going to be Norcus who actually is the one that gets his hands on that one, directs it straight down on the court. Buchanan continuing to serve. That's a good serve right there. Back setting for Rogers. Dug by Norcus. If he was 6'9", he would not have been able to get that. That ball back a little bit on Rogers. Blocked at the net. Another block. Norcus. Looking for Rogers again. Three blocks are there. And, Nor and Rogers works it off of the wall. And now Dupree Rogers will be going back to serve. His Red Hawks up by five. Not nearly as many service errors for the Red Hawks. That was just nine for them. Masters at 20. Matthew Ham serving. Very short, just gets it over the net. Rogers, a soft hit. That is so, and he points to his own head. As he's thinking as he's out there, where he can take advantage of the weak spots in the defense. That was well done. Getting a lot of fives from his teammates. Daniel Compton, sophomore from nearby Saugus High School with the serve. That one gets into the rafters, but it is bumped over and then slammed home by Tyler Watts. I mentioned that these two teams, this is the third time that they've played against each other. Masters won the match a year ago, January 27th, in four sets. Benedictine came in here as one of the top teams in the nation a couple of years ago when the Mustangs were still in their infancy and easily beat them in three as a timeout by the Mustangs. And with this being Super Bowl weekend, Benedictine with the touchdown lead over the Masters. Mentioned about how this is just the third time that these two teams have played against each other. It's only the fourth year that the Masters has even had men's volleyball. That first year was a struggle, and I remember calling those games and getting excited when we actually just won a point, and then three matches or so, three or four matches into the season, finally won a set, let alone forget about winning matches, just winning a set, winning points. That was what mattered in those early years, that early year. It's only the fifth year that men's volleyball has been in the Golden State Athletic Conference. And as I mentioned earlier in the match, only six teams from the conference are sporting a men's volleyball team. And what's interesting, again, I'll reiterate it, in this week's national poll, Masters number one, Ottawa number two, Vanguard number three, Menlo number six, Grandview and this Benedictine team, the other two teams in the top six in the nation that are not part of the GSAC. Compton continuing to serve. Quick set for Norcus. Tipped away by Watts. Another block. Watts is there. Back setting this time for Norcus. That block is going to go out. By the way, the good news for you Landon Fuller fans. Landon is on his feet and he's cheering on his teammates. His face looks fine. <laughs> it's where he got hit. I'm just saying earlier. That's where he got hit in the face. 
So he's not off to the side getting medical attention or anything like that. He's on his feet and he is cheering and his mind is in this game. On the line is the call. Taylor Stallman turning and saying it was a foot out. But an ace for Diego Perez. That is his ninth on the season, and he just got his tenth on the season. Mustangs had just one ace in the first two sets. They averaged one and a half per set. That one goes long. But the Mustangs were able to climb back to within four. Now it's a five point difference. As Josh Bamer will come back into the front row, he'll replace Daxton Tolman. And Chris Kissling serving for the Red Hawks. Flex in off the block. Point Masters. Difficult pass for Ethan Egger. I don't think that ball, that ball probably crept up. And then to see Flex, and again, he gets such good height on the ball, and when he's hitting down on he's hitting it off the fingertips in many cases, and that just rede redirects it. Braden Van Groningen serving. Tolman with the quick set. Will Avera with the solo block. The difference is three. Again, if you're joining us late, Masters won the first two sets, 25-18, 25-20. Been trailing throughout this entire third set. It was tied at 1.33. Jolly off the block, point Benedictine. At that point, Benedictine went on a 5-0 run to go up 8-3, and they have maintained a 3-5, to five, maybe even 6-point difference throughout this third set. Now Tolman serving. Just popped over by Diego Perez. Back setting to, jo oh my goodness, to, to Rogers. That was an awkward hit for Rogers, and yet somehow he's able to get that to go off the block. And it's set point now for Benedictine. And after everything that went on at the end of the second set, Benedictine has just been rejuvenated in this match. Flexen's gonna hit it long and it's gonna be 25 to 19, Benedictine with this set win. Mustangs still lead it though. Two sets to one. We will step aside. And when we come back, set four. In Genesis 1, God established a mandate. Subdue the earth and have dominion over it. At the Masters University, we see engineering as a clear fulfillment of that command. Our students learn to design, apply, and advance technology for the good of their fellow man and the glory of the Creator. We don't just develop engineers. We equip leaders to engage world-changing technology through the lens of unchanging truth. After graduation, our mechanical engineers will design car engines, satellites, and robots, machines that increase productivity and raise standards of living. Our electrical engineers will develop technology that connects us, from the cell phones in our hands to the power grids in our communities. And our computer engineers will make faster, more efficient hardware for both the workplace and home. So come to the Master's University, study engineering, and be equipped to fulfill the Creator's mandate. Subdue the earth and have dominion over it. Nicole Natake came to the Master's University to study biology. And while she was there, she hit a few threes. Well, a lot of threes. So Nicole, what are you up to now? Yeah, so I went on to get my doctorate of pharmacy, and now I'm a pharmacist in Torrance, California. Great. So, where are we? Welcome to PharmCo. 
We're a pharmacy that specializes in compounding medication that isn't normally available on the market, so we can better serve our patients. Wait, was that a KitchenAid? Yeah, it's actually a really effective way to mix our compounds. You don't say. So we take the ingredients, we make the calculations based on the formula, we compound it into a capsule of cream or solution, and we package it all up and ship it all over the United States. Oh, and this is my mom. She's a pharmacist too. And so is my dad, but he works at a different pharmacy. Wow, what a pharmaceutical family. So what do you love about being a pharmacist? Well, I like being able to help people and being able to use science to glorify God every day. So you really can live out your faith as a pharmacist, huh? Oh, absolutely. But I didn't always see it that way. I used to believe that science was the foundation for all truth. But at Masters, I realized that the Lord and His Word is the foundation for truth. Science is just a means to discover what He's made. Professors like Ross Anderson helped show me that. Honestly, I wouldn't be where I am today without my time at Masters. It prepared me for grad school and for the rest of my life. Nicole, thanks for sharing your story. Sports set about to get underway here in the MacArthur Center on the campus of the Masters University. Number one, Masters over number five, number five Benedictine, leading two sets to one. Mustangs getting the first two sets with Benedictine coming back in that third set to get the 25-19 set win. Mustangs did not hit as well in that second set, and Benedictine hit much better. So now for the match, Mustangs hitting 500, Benedictine hitting 205. Mustangs now with four hitting errors. They had three just in that third set. 15 errors for Benedictine. Dupree Rogers and Landon Fuller leading hitters for Benedictine. They've got eight kills each. Four each for John Dawson, Simon Jolly, and Tyler Watts. Nolan Flexen hitting 542 in the match. 14 kills, but his hitting percentage is not as good as Trent Norcus. Norcus hitting 545. 11 attempts, seven kills, just one error. Brett Norcus with six kills in the match, hitting 750. Daniel Compton to serve for Benedictine. Diego Perez with the set, and that's Trent Norcus the hit, picked up. And then hammered, and once again, and that's gonna be Jolly. Benedictine was able to jump out to a quick lead in the third set, and that's when the things just shifted. The momentum clearly went back over onto the Red Hawks side. Can the Mustangs now match it with this point? And they do, Diego Perez. And see, that's important because it was a quick, if I'm not mistaken, two set, and then it was 2-0, and then 3-1 in the third set. Now the Mustangs even it up here 1-1 in the fourth. Just the third kill of the match for Diego Perez. And Daxton, excuse me, Tyler Watts getting his fifth. Chris Kissling, now serving for the Red Hawks. Chris Kissling back to serve for the Red Hawks. Overpass and taking advantage of it was Dawson. Now Flexen with the hit goes off the ceiling and that's gonna be a double hit. So the point will go to the Mustangs. Tolman with the double hit. Ethan Egger is gonna stay in and he'll serve. Quick set in the middle to Dawson. Five now for Dawson. Now Tolman will go back to serve. Long. Just the 13th service error for Benedictine. As I mentioned earlier, Mustangs with 20 in the first three sets. That's nearly seven per set. They had seven in the first, seven in the second, six in the third. 
Bryce Jones in to serve. Quick set. Avery got a piece of that. And some argument for Benedictine. Wow, this is so interesting. The coaching staff actually went onto the floor to argue while the play was still going on. The fans are beside themselves. The point went to Benedictine. They lead it 4-3, but it wasn't the way they wanted it to go. Here's Flexen, long. That's the first hitting error, I'm sorry, the second hitting error that Nolan Flexen has in this match. Just the second. He has been so efficient with his hits here in the first six matches of this season. Going for Flexen again, straight down. That time he gets the kill. 15 now for Nolan. And Nolan will now go back to serve. Jared Goldberg, the head coach for the Mustangs, having a conversation with Dupree Rogers while Dupree's on the floor. Here's Dupree with the swing. And it goes off the, and then Dupree points over to Goldberg and tells him to shush. Okay. Emotions are high in the gym, as we mentioned. John Dawson to serve, two point lead. And that's gonna go on the wrong side of the antenna. So the point will go to Masters. And Will Aver will go back to serve. Blocked by Isaac Seltzer. Oh, that was special for Isaac Seltzer. It was a good set. Tyler Watts got a clean hit, and it was just Seltzer he had to beat. And Seltzer won the battle. Tied at six here in the fourth. Out. Twenty-one service errors. Now Dupree Rogers. That one goes off the ceiling, but and Diego can't get the third hit to get up and over. Ball goes off the ceiling. I think it was Flexen from the back row trying to direct it and put it too close to the net, but it was just coming straight down from the ceiling. Difficult play. So a two-point lead for Benedictine. And Rogers continuing to serve. Soft serve. Just diving is Edgar, and it's going to be an ace for Rogers. Rogers continuing to serve. Perez. Back setting for Rogers. Dug by Jones. Momentum on the side of the Red Hawks. The lead is four. Timeout, Mustangs.
Good hit. That time, Fort Benedictine continues with their lead, 11 to six now. And continuing with the serve, Dupree Rogers puts it into the net. Now coming in to serve will be Matthew Ham. And Ham goes into the net. So with the with Benedictine getting that momentum and they've got that on their shoulders right now, it doesn't help Mustangs continuing with the service error. It just helps to put that momentum squarely on the shoulders. Daniel Compton serving. Back set to Norcus, trying to get it down the line. Joust at the net, that was an overpass. Might have been a mistake for Trent Norcus because he was, I don't know if he was trying to keep that ball alive to create a third hit, but he just pushed it over and it was, became an easy set, easy overpass for Benedictine to hammer home. And that's a error against Benedictine, but theirs have been few and far between compared to the service errors for the Mustangs. Masters down by five. And Diego Perez. And I don't know why the Benedictine guys are chanting BYU at Diego Perez. He went to Pepperdine for a year and then came here and was an All-American. But Chris Kissling serving. Flexen. 16th for Nolan Flexen. Mustangs are going to need a lot more of that to get themselves back into this match. They won the first two sets, 25-18, 25-20, and then it was Benedictine that rode some emotion into the third set to win it 25-19 and continuing here with the five-point lead in the fourth. Dug by Ham, Perez tries to get it, but it's gonna be Simon Jolly. Seven for Jolly. Tolman now serving. Ace. First of this match for Daxton Tolman. Sixth of the season for the 6'3 senior. excuse me, 6'3", Junior. And then he follows that up with the error, but still, it's a six-point lead for Benedictine. Needing to win this one to force a fifth set. And Bryce Jones now coming in to serve. Challenging moment for the Mustangs and coach Jared Goldberg to get back into this match. And a perfect time for a soft hit for Dupree Rogers. He's got 10. And he even turns to Tolman, and I read his lips. He goes, perfect set, perfect set. Exactly how he wanted it. Jolly serving. Back row for Seltzer. Oh, that was nice. Starts with a good pass, always. Bryce Jones communicating and getting that back row set for Seltzer. Fifth for Seltzer. John Dawson serving. Seltzer blocked. There's Diego Perez covering. Now Perez with the hit, blocked. Goes off of Perez. And I'm not sure what the call is, and neither is Jared Goldberg. He's over here arguing with 
down ref David Steinbacher. I'm not sure why, because that ball actually looked like, to me, it went over on the second hit, but I, I did not see what the call was. That's a block. Rogers and Watts combining. Timeout, Masters as Benedictine now up by nine here in the fourth set. Coming out of the timeout, it is all Benedictine right now. John Dawson serving, puts it into the net, but that just makes it an eight point difference that Masters need to go on a big time run to see if they can close out this match in this fourth set. Otherwise, we're going to a fifth. Back setting for Rogers, blocks. Out of bounds. And now Rogers back to serve. Rogers has been really strong here in this. So Rogers to serve. And trying to save it was Bryce Jones, a dig from Van Graan again, but the strong serve from Dupree Rogers. And the Red Hawks are now just three points away from forcing that fifth set. Quick set to Brett Norcus, back row, and that one's going to be long for Jolly. So the point will go to Masters. But right now, Benedictine is riding a giant wave of emotion and getting fully pumped up for that. They've been doing that since the end of the second game. Matthew Ham serving. And the ball hits the top of the net and just barely gets over. Now Compton gets it in, a big hit. First kill for Daniel Compton of this match. And he'll go back to serve. Big smile for Compton. Compton goes to, went to Saugus High School, I mentioned that earlier. And the uh, multi-Olympian David Smith went to that program as that ball is going to go off of the block as Van Groningen will get his first of the night. And he'll go back to serve now. Quick set. Set point as Tyler Watts hammers it straight down. Chris Kissling in to serve. Flexen, Kissling, a great dig. Jolly, the soft touch. Back setting for Norcus, Trent Norcus. Flexen. 
And the Mustangs are still alive in this fourth set. And Ethan Egger will go back to serve for the Masters. Long. 25 to 15, Benedictine gets the fourth set, forcing a fifth. First one to 15, got a win by two. Who's gonna win this one? We'll see when we come back. Nicole Natake came to the Masters University to study biology. And while she was there, she hit a few threes. Well, a lot of threes. So Nicole, what are you up to now? Yeah, so I went on to get my doctorate of pharmacy and now I'm a pharmacist in Torrance, California. Great, so where are we? Welcome to PharmCo. We're a pharmacy that specializes in compounding medication that isn't normally available on the market, so we can better serve our patients. Wait, was that a KitchenAid? Yeah, it's actually a really effective way to mix our compounds. You don't say. So we take the ingredients, we make the calculations based on the formula, we compound it into a capsule of cream or solution, and we package it all up and ship it all over the United States. Oh, and this is my mom. She's a pharmacist too. And so is my dad, but he works at a different pharmacy. Wow, what a pharmaceutical family. So what do you love about being a pharmacist? Well, I like being able to help people and being able to use science to glorify God every day. So you really can live out your faith as a pharmacist, huh? Oh, absolutely. But I didn't always see it that way. I used to believe that science was the foundation for all truth. But at Masters, I realized that the Lord and His Word is the foundation for truth. Science is just a means to discover what He's made. Professors like Ross Anderson helped show me that. Honestly, I wouldn't be where I am today without my time at Masters. It prepared me for grad school and for the rest of my life. Nicole, thanks for sharing your story. Well, if you were a volleyball fan, this is like game seven of the World Series or something similar. When you get a fifth game, I mean, it is one of the best parts of the sport, in my opinion, is a fifth set. Two teams, Masters took the first two sets, 25-18, 25-20, appropriate here in the MacArthur Center, that Star Wars music is being played right now. I mean, you know, it's a battle of titans right now. Benedictine coming back, getting the second two sets, 25-19, and a very convincing 25-15 fourth set victory. Now, will Benedictine be able to continue to ride that momentum that they built up through the third and fourth sets, or will the Masters somehow figure out a way to take that emotion away or spin it and be able to redirect it? Diego Perez has put on a libero jersey. So Diego Perez is now a libero for the Mustangs. Quick set in the middle and Benedictine continues. Tyler Watts hammers that one. Watts now with his eighth. Mustangs hitting 422 in the match. Benedictine now up to 277, improving over sets three or with sets three and four. Flex in. Well, that was a strong one. And you need to go to your main guy and tell him you got to get us there. And that's Nolan Flexen right there. 
Flexen now with 19 kills. And that one is going to go over, and the Mustangs get the lead here, 2-1 to one in this fifth set. Every point matters. That's an ace, is that one you can see going over, despite Tolman's efforts. And that's out. That was the fourth ace of the match, by the way, for Diego Perez. Now Tolman back to serve. He has an ace in this match. Flexen is good. 20 for Flexen. Bryce Jones comes in. He'll serve. He'll also set. Long. Twenty six service errors. Simon Jolly serving now for Benedictine. They have eighteen service errors. Flexen off the block. Masters up by one. Long. John Dawson back to serve for the Red Hawks. Tied at four in the fifth set. Ben Gronigan popping it over. Free opportunity. Back setting for Rogers. Good. Well, we had one line judge say good, and now conversation between Kathy Blaze and North Steinbacher, the line judge there. And North explaining what she saw. Now, Stephanie Steinbacher coming over to have an explanation as well. Point Mustangs. And Benedictine not arguing that one as much as they have some of the others. Abra with the serve. Back row, good. Simon Jolly, eight for him. Now Dupree Rogers back to serve. He's got three aces in this match. Van Groningen, dug by Benton. Back row for Jolly. Flexen back row. Wow, that was special. You see the good dig by Diego Perez, a great pass, and getting that back row set, and it just comes down so hard, and you see barely any reaction from the defense from Benedictine in that. That was, that was really something. Now Johnny Buchanan to serve. Difficult, and just getting it over was Tolman, but that was that was a ball that might have even been destined to be an overpass. And tied at six. Now Daniel Compton to serve. Brett Norcus in the middle. Seven for Brett. So Masters gets the one point lead. Braden Van Groningen to serve. Good serve. 
trying to direct it and making it on the line is Simon Jolly. Neither one of these teams is giving up anything. Back and forth, tied right now at seven. Josh Bamer comes into the front row. Tolman will have a seat on the bench. Flexen. 23 for Flexen. Masters up by one. Diego Perez back to serve. Four aces in the match for Diego Perez today. But the bigger number is 28 service errors by the Mustang. Now Daxton Tolman back to serve. We're tied at eight. Flexen blocked. Tolman. Now Rogers. So what I'm understanding is that the call is a double hit. There was obviously the set, the ball coming up and spinning. Simon Jolly is, he actually literally climbed up the ladder to talk with Kathy Blaze. Now Kathy Blaze is coming down and meeting Simon Jolly on the floor to talk. And Jolly is pointing to the fans who are actually up behind us who are yelling and screaming. What they're saying, the rule is Simon is still looking up at the fans as if to get direction from the fans. Kathy Blaze issuing a yellow card. And now she's issued a second yellow card. Well, things are certainly emotional right now. And David Steinbacher is now going over to the official score to communicate the two yellows that were just issued against Benedictine right now. And I don't know if one of those may have been towards the fans or even towards the coaches. In the meantime, Mustangs leading nine to eight. Back to the action, Bryce Jones serving. A good serve it was. <laughs> Nolan Flexen and this crowd in the MacArthur Center jumps to their feet. Masters lead by two. Benedictine takes a timeout after that monster blast from Flexen.
Coming out of the timeout. Mustangs lead by two here in the fifth set. First one to 15, got a win by two. Bryce Jones serving. Quick set, and that goes off of one of the Mustangs. So the point will go to Benedictine, the hit from John Dawson. So Simon Jolly to serve. Just goes off the top of the net. Here's Flexen, soft hit. Dive by Tolman to save it. Now Jolly from the back row. Seltzer blocked, dug up by Flexen. Flexen, dug by Benton. Soft touch. Didn't see who got it. I'm thinking it might have been Dawson. I'm not sure, but bottom line is we're tied at 10. Flex in. Twenty-five for Flexen. Now Matt Ham is going to come in. He's going to replace Flexen as Matt Ham will go back to serve. So the Mustangs right now will have both Bryce Jones and Matt Ham serving. Jones goes over and has a conversation with Ham. And then we have an overpass, Van Gron again, but goes off the top of Kissling, off his shoulder. Back set, Van Gron again. The Mustangs up by two. That second one was special for Van Gron again. That was with authority. Just a second kill for Braden Van Gron again in the match. Ham serving, Masters leading by two. Quick set, blocked. Rogers, good. Fourteen for Rogers. He's leading Benedictine. Now Dawson will go back to serve. Masters leading 12-11. Service error has not been a big deal for Benedictine, but Dawson just buried his face in his uniform and is now walking away, very upset with that. The overpass, Point Masters, match point. And I didn't see anything wrong with that. Some of the Benedictine, and now Jolly's gonna go over and have another conversation. But that ball was a 50-50 ball, if anything. And Braden Van Gronigan just popped it down, and Tolman caught it. And Tolman was under the impression that that was a ball that he should not have been hitting. So here we are at match point now, 14-11. Jolly having to play the role of conduit as he goes back and forth between up ref Kathy Blaze and his head coach Taylor Stallman to relay communication. Bottom line, point Mustangs, and we're at match point. Avera to serve. Out. But we're still at match point. Jared Goldberg asking how many timeouts he has. And he's going to use one right now. No, he's not. No, he's not. Dupre Rogers serving. Service error. Mustangs win the match.
A lot of emotion in this one. But the Mustangs will improve to five and one with the five set match. Some words being exchanged by Red Hawks players directed at the officials. But bottom line, it's a Mustangs win. They go to five and one on the season. The Red Hawks will fall to three and three. Nolan Flexen will finish with 25 kills to Pre Rogers with 14. For all of us associated with the Masters University Athletics, I'm Dave Caldwell. Thanks for being with us, everybody. We will see you again next time.